Welcome to another episode of Coffee in the Cloud. I'm your host, Kara Wanagatimu. Let's hop into today's topic. So this is one of the first Coffee in the Cloud episodes you've ever seen. Uh, we talk about teamwork here. And we talk a lot about Microsoft Teams because it is the new hub for teamwork in Office 365. It gives you an ability to transform your teamwork through chat meetings and calls, communicating more clearly by collaborating on documents, files, and other sorts of data. Of course, you can customize and extend it uh, with your own apps or those provided by our third-party developers and you can work with confidence because it's built on top of Office 365 and the security and compliance capabilities that we deliver there. It's really an exciting time. Uh, this space is transforming quite a lot and so one of the first things I like to give everybody is the resource cheat sheet for this space. There's a lot going on and if you're listening on the podcast these are aka.ms links so we've got our O365 roadmap, that's O365 roadmap, that's the link itself. Teams community, which is our Microsoft technical community. You can ask questions and meet other people who are working in Microsoft Teams and Office 365. Our success with Teams site is all of our practical guidance for planning, uh, deploying, adopting, and managing Microsoft Teams, plus all of our Skype for Business to Teams guidance. And then, of course, this show here on Coffee in the Cloud. But maybe the most important link is O365 Champions. That is a link that will allow you to sign up for our Office 365 Champions program, and that gets you access to a dedicated forum with early release materials and resources for your journey to Teams and in Office 365. There are Microsoft experts and your peers who will be presenting in our free monthly calls and we're really excited about this program because we know that many of you are learning along with us in this journey and we want to share with you the benefit of the knowledge of not only uh, folks inside Microsoft and, and in our partner community but from each other. Really learning from other people who are going along this journey is one of the most powerful things you can do so we hope that you will sign up for that program and join us in those monthly calls. We know that when people are moving uh, to Microsoft Teams that the best thing that they can do is pick some top level scenarios to start to work in Teams and really get the hang of it and understand what's the best uh, and most powerful for scenarios for you. And so there's three that we think of uh, as core to this transition and it's project management, personal productivity, and calling in meetings. Uh, in each one of these scenarios there are challenges we're all familiar with uh, not knowing where the right version of the document is, not being privy to all the conversations about things. Um, you know, in our meetings, sometimes they're not as effective as they can be before, during, and after. So Microsoft Teams has capabilities that really focuses on uh, streamlining these scenarios. Now today we're going to talk about project management. And you don't have to be a career project manager or portfolio manager like me to get the benefit of this. One way or another, we're all PMs because uh, we all have to track actions and understand uh, what we're trying to do to, to deliver uh, things for our companies. And so I wanted to really uh, highlight this particular scenario. Uh, modern project management, there are three pillars uh, where you can use Microsoft Teams to uh, improve uh, your project management skills and also streamline uh, your communication with your team. That's the first thing, really changing the way you communicate, collaborating more effectively together on documents or with feedback and polls, and shared notes. And what we're going to talk about today, which is the management aspect, action item tracking, uh, making sure that you have a view of what you yourself have to get done, and then understanding uh, where large-scale project management office functions fall in this. Today we're going to talk about Planner because Planner is a part of Office 365 and is available to you inside of Teams and it's a fantastic way to run your project. So let's hop into the demonstration and I'll talk you through uh, what that looks like. Okay, here we are in the web experience of Microsoft Teams. And I'm in a team here that's uh, a launch team. This is a product launch team. And I'm in a channel that is dedicated to the go-to-market plan. One of the things I just want to point out is whenever you're running a project, it's important to have the work streams or the segments of your project uh, potentially have their own channels. And it depends on the size of your team but it really helps to organize the information. Here we've got design, go-to-market, legal and compliance, web and social trends. 
So depending on the size of your project, you want to think about as a PM how you're going to organize that work as you set up your team. So obviously this is a product launch, and so yes, you have a go-to-market plan. What you're looking at here, though, is your basic plan. So uh, if you want to add a Microsoft Planner plan to your team, you're going to hit the plus sign here in your upper navigation, and that's going to get you into the tab gallery. Planner is one of those uh, first party and featured apps that's included. Uh, and now if you don't see this in your environment, your IT department may have turned off these apps. So you'll want to talk with them about getting them turned back on. Because without especially these first party apps, these featured apps, you know, the effectiveness of teams can be uh, not as great as you might want it to be in your organization. Of course, we encourage you to take a look at all the other apps that we have, but most definitely things like SharePoint and OneNote and PDFs and Planner, these things need to be turned on uh, so that you can get the most out of the product. So Planner is here, and if I click on that icon, I'm going to get an opportunity to create a new plan right here in this area. Uh, I can also pin an existing plan from the same Office 365 group or Microsoft Teams uh, team into this particular channel. So more than one channel can share a plan. Uh, but what I did is I simply created a new basic plan. And what happens is you created uh, this plan with a to-do column and then a place that says add new bucket. This is again to give you the ability to configure your plan with work streams and types of tasks that you might want to group together. Now you can group your tasks by bucket. I'm going to go over here to the right hand side and I'm going to hit this download arrow where it says group by bucket. I can group them by who they're assigned to, their state of progress, their due date, and also labels which I can configure. So let's go over to one that I built out a little bit uh, that's a little bit more robust and show you what that looks like. So here's our product launch event plan. I gave it that name when I created it so it would be easy for other people to find. You'll see I kept my to-do column. This is just a backlog of tasks that I have to be mindful of, but I've also made additional buckets, kickoff party, logistics, and if I scroll to the side, I can still add new buckets. Maybe what I want to do is say uh, product delivery, and I can add a column there for tasks in that particular category. Now, what's fantastic is all I have to do is hit a little plus sign here, and I can add a new task for people. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It gives me this quick entry view right here. So for the kickoff party, I need a catering menu. So I'm going to type that in as the name of my task. I'm going to set a due date uh, for later in October, and then I'm going to assign it to one of the members of the team. The people that I see here on this pop-up are people who are already members of the launch team in Microsoft Teams. So if someone's not in the team that you're working in, you can't assign a task to them. So I'm going to go ahead and assign this to Diego. And I can assign it to more than one person if there's a team of people working on it, but I'm going to leave it at Diego for now. And then I'm just going to click Add Task, and that task is now available. Now I can add more details here, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that task again. And I know Diego's already been working on this, so I'm going to change its progress to in progress. Uh, he already started on this work last week, so I'm going to go ahead and add that, and you'll see why that's important later. And I can, of course, add in a description here. You know, um, make sure to accommodate uh, vegan options. Okay. Now, that description can also be shown on the card, so you don't have to click into the card to see that information, which is very handy. And I can also add a checklist of items here. Uh, and so I'm just going to put in item 1 and item 2. But these could all be various subtasks that have to be done uh, to make sure that this overall task is completed. And I can also show those on the card. What's also fantastic is I can add an attachment. I can put in a link here, or I can go to the SharePoint site that's associated with this team, and I can make sure that all of the documents, for instance, maybe there's a contract, there's menus that my caterer has sent to me, all of that can be uh, added and attached to this uh, particular task. I'm going to go ahead and close that, and you can see now how this particular task now shows these other items that I have added on it. And this little indicator here uh, showing the half circle indicates that this task is in progress. 
one of the things I love about this is when I run my stand-up meetings or my project meetings, I have everybody in the plan at the same time. You can co-author and edit these items together as you're talking about things. Uh, and if things are moving along great, then fantastic. But if there's an item or a blocker, a person can actually come in here into this item and they can add a comment. Uh, need to identify budget. You need to know the budget before you can figure out the catering. So that I'm going to go ahead and send and it's going to be added to uh, the information that's here that I can see for this particular item. Now what's also great about this, besides being able to access it here in the experience of Microsoft Teams, Planner has a fantastic web app and it al they also have a great mobile application. So if Diego is out uh, talking to caterers and getting quotes, uh, he can upload information, he can update this task right in the field. So for those of you who don't work in a, in a traditional kind of office business or consulting or things of that nature, but if you have people that are doing work out in the field, think about how this could empower your communication to get information right back from them as they're there. Uh, that he can attach pictures and other items, uh, and it's a fantastic way to improve your customer service. So as I mentioned, there is an ability to see this on the web uh, outside of Microsoft Teams. And up here in the upper right hand corner, there's a little icon that says go to website. And if I click on that, it's going to take me here out to Planner. Uh, this is the experience that you get if you launch Planner directly from the Office 365 app launcher. I can see these same items, a right? little bit of a different view, a little bit more robust. And I can also do charts. So I can see how many of these items are already in progress, how many are late, what's completed, uh, what bucket are they in, and I can continue to filter these items and also filter my view uh, in terms of who I've assigned uh, tasks to. So the view here for members will show you every member in the team, but if I know I only assign people to myself, to Diego, and to Adele, I can filter this view so that I'm only looking at those items uh, that were assigned to those people. Now here's another fantastic thing, schedule. Up in the upper middle here, there is the opportunity to look at this in a calendar view. Uh, I really like this from a visibility perspective. It really helps me to understand what's happening when, uh, looking at it in this schedule view. And there's another fantastic thing. If you are using Exchange Online, you can click this ellipses here and say add plan to Outlook calendar. What that enables you to do is overlay all of your tasks in this particular plan with your actual calendar in Outlook. So you can look at it in all one place and that works all the way to Outlook on your mobile device. So you've got end-to-end -end visibility of this plan, whether you're looking at Outlook along with the things you have to do in your day uh, or you want to just look at the plan itself. So I'm going to go ahead and say add uh, this to the Outlook feed. I'm going to say publish. Now I can only do this because I'm an owner of the team. Not everyone can do that. So uh, it's important to be an owner of the team so that you can uh, add this here. You notice when I click add to Outlook it automatically brings me uh, to the screen for my calendar subscription. It gives me an opportunity to rename this calendar if I want. And I'm just going to go ahead and click on save. Now that is going to be available here under my group called Other Calendars and it's automatically turned on when I finish that. And I just love this because, you know, for me project management doesn't happen outside of all the other things I'm doing in a day. I want to be able to see these uh, requirements and what needs to be done, but sometimes I want to turn it off also. So all I have to do is come up here and hit this X to uh, remove this particular plan from my view. I've got a couple of them I'm looking at and now I'm just back to my regular calendar. If I want to turn it back on again I just select it from the other calendars area and it will overlay itself with my core calendar. Alright, so now let's go back into Microsoft Teams because I want to show you another handy thing. Once you've been in Teams for a while, you may have multiple plans that you're working on. We've got our project product launch event here, but you may have plans in other locations. If you hit this ellipses over on the far left uh, of Microsoft Teams, you'll notice that there is a planner app. This is a personal planner app. This gives you the ability to take a look at all of the tasks that have been assigned to you from a variety of different products, projects. 
So these projects items, these task items are here. I've got several in the not started category from the product launch event plan and there's another one here from event schedules and then there's a learning planner. All of these things have items that have been assigned to me. I can also click and see the recent plans that I've been working on and then all of the plans that I have access to. So you don't have to leave Microsoft Teams to get a good overview of what's happening for you personally across all of the plans that you may be using inside of Microsoft Teams. And here in my personal view, it's not just a view. I can actually take actions on these items. So I've already started building the demo environment from this product launch event plan. So I'm going to drag this item over to in progress. It makes an update here. You can see my little in progress icons now available. And if someone was looking over in the view of the planner view within this team, they would see that change. Uh, the learning planner pro item here. I've already finished this. So I'm going to drag this over to completed. You can see it strikes itself out. I can also change the priority of items in my own view by dragging and dropping them just like a standard Kanban board. So it really gives me that ability to manipulate my own tasks right here in one view. I can also see the recent plans that I've interacted with here in this tab and if I click all I'll be able to see all of the plans that I have access to throughout uh, Office 365 and my team's environment. So right here under the ellipses that personal planner app really gives you a view of everything that you need to see about your tasks across the different planners that you have implemented in Teams. It's a very, very helpful uh, way to look at them. And when I go back here into the team where the planner exists, why I can see these updates have been made. Of course, if you're doing a large-scale portfolio management, Microsoft Project or Azure DevOps are still two fantastic options, and the teams are working together to integrate these things along with Microsoft To Do as time goes on. So it's a fantastic way to simplify and streamline this core scenario, and I hope that this tech tip was helpful.